my husband and I moved to London. So I got to work on interna in international museums, and so I chose an international theme. One of the other things that drives endangerment is trade, black market trade in animal products and animals. Uh, second only to, to guns, by some estimates, that it's a real big money generator. And the more endangered something gets, the more valuable it is, which drives the desire to get it and sell it on the market. Uh, it was great fun to be able to work at Q and work with Traffic International. I was kind of a nobody, but I just sort of wiggled my way in like a brash American because I really wanted to get the research done. Um, one of the things that I, one of the reasons that I built this painting about black market trade is that I also wanted to talk about gray market trade, something we don't talk about as much. Um, it's an ungoverned trade. So, you know, Matsutakis can be found in the North Pacific Northwest. An individual Matsutake sells now for about $75 in Tokyo. That's a big market driver. Um, and this thing on the right, uh, right, is um, American ginseng. It's not governed. Uh, it is in mostly in the Appalachians, the Great Smokies in the Appalachians. Nothing wrong with it. It's a cash crop for poor Appalachian people. But it also happens to grow in an area that has the highest endemism of salamanders in the world. And we don't know whether it has an impact. Hopefully somebody's written about it since I did the painting that long ago. Um, kind of growing out of this whole thing, I started working toward um, things that had gone extinct. So I began, it took me about, I did about four years of research on extinction because I had to kind of find the pieces and follow the stories bit by bit. What kept happening is I would say, well, this went to the brink and then was found, or it went to the brink and somebody carefully brought it back. The uh, Mauritius kestrel up there at the top um, was saved by one man over the course of two years, the whole species. Um, uh, sorry, I lost my track. Each painting begins as a database, by the way, not as a drawing. Um, and I was already working on building this gone database when this sort of said, well, this is a great one, you know, these things have come back. So I've read about this magnolia in The Secret Life of Plants by Richard Attenborough and BBC, and it was about a magnolia that was found in Japan in a 2,000-year-old jar of rice. Some seeds were there, they planted them. Lo and behold, it's a new species. And I thought, well, how perfect. I'll use that as kind of my coat hanger, you know, how I arranged the painting. And I'll, I'll find out about it later. So I just was busy working on the painting and emailing people, and all the uh, magnolia people I spoke to said, They're no their seeds are notoriously short-lived. I finally ended up writing BBC, Attenborough, the, Jap the university of the Japanese researchers couldn't find the researchers, so I wrote Gillian Prance, who used to be the secretary of Q, and his response was, Izzy, I can't help you with this one. I think it's a hoax. The whole thing was a hoax. But I'd already done so much of the work <laughs> um, that I decided to leave it in there as to represent our desire for nature to be resilient. <laughs>